I'm Dirk Templer. I'm working in University of Maastricht School of Business and Economics uh, as an associate professor over there. And I'm one of the kind of founders of the school because I went working there 30 years ago, 32 years ago, when the school was founded at that time. So I've been bu busy with building the what we call the method uh, part of the curriculum for the economics and business students from the very beginning up to the moment now. So I'm still uh, my my major task is really teaching uh, the students in the business in the mathematics and statistics, especially in the students who are arriving uh, just from high school mm -hmm. in their first year. Okay, so we have been doing a lot of learning analytics uh, together with other Dutch partners, especially amongst Open University, also uh, Eindhoven and in Amsterdam. And we did so in the context of SURF projects. Now, the SURF projects have been focusing on two things um, uh, beyond learning analytics, uh, mostly, uh, first and for all, on uh, digital testing and the, the ability of students to practice in a personal way using technology-enhanced uh, education. So uh, smart e-tutorials in order to, if you have any backlog in your statistical or mathematical knowledge, uh, to catch up with the other students using these smart e-tutorials. So we have been working in these areas already uh, for a long time together with the, uh, the other institutes. And we found out that what we learned from the students, uh, from them practicing in these environments and also doing formative testing in these environments, so testing uh, to help learning rather than testing of learning, that we learned that there's a lot of uh, importance in these data. We can learn a lot how students, for instance, ask for feedback, how their learning approach is. Um, so we started uh, using these data in order to help students in catching up. Yeah, so it was a kind of national step from using these uh, test-based uh, educational uh, um, methods uh, to using the data coming from that. Um, so we did so together with um, uh, the, the other partners uh, using uh, formative assessment data. And then at some time we also introduced what we call disposition data. Um, uh, I profit from the fact that I'm a teacher also in statistics, so I let my students uh, work on a personal data set and or they have to study that data set and to do some st statistical analysis of it. And that data set is all about how your approach is in the learning process. So we are using some surveys and the students get the data of the surveys back, uh, but this, this, those surveys uh, tell them, okay, I'm, uh, I'm a deep learner or a superficial learner, uh, I, I'm good in regulating my own learning or I need a teacher or a computer software to, in order to regulate the learning. So we kind of collecting all these type of data and add that as a third component to the data we are using in learning analytics, the so-called disposition data. Yeah, so we have a lot of experiences in having such rich data sets. And then it's the nice thing in, in our applications that we try to find out uh, what data at what moment is most important in helping students out. And then we, uh, our conclusion is at the moment that, especially in the start of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a course, uh, you can profit from this disposition data together with some student background data. And then later on, you're getting collecting more and more cognitive data from the, uh, the e-tutorials, from the formative assessments, and then the role of this disposition data becomes less and the role of this cognitive data becomes stronger in helping students. And so that's our, in short, our experiences to learning analytics in our university. Yeah, so what we, uh, at the moment I'm applying learning analytics in, in a micro way. Yeah? So I'm doing it as the teacher in my own course, and it, it's a huge course uh, with more than 1,000 students, but it's still only one course. Yeah? So once we establish that learning analytics is really helping these students, we should think about going beyond those uh, early practitioners which are using learning analytics, uh, which have found time from, uh, from their own time, uh, but help other teachers uh, to introduce it. 
uh, and that would really require institutional support. Uh, the, the institution should really take it as one of the uh, objectives uh, for the next future. Uh, it also should reserve at least time for teachers in order to do it. Uh, it will bring an investment cost at, at, at the very beginning. It may be later on the same thing, but then first uh, it needs extra time. So institutions should support teachers in order to do so. So that's, I think, the most important step in terms of policy. Yeah, so in Maastricht we have the, the, the very special situation that we our teaching model is this problem-based learning, which is small group teaching. And so groups of students, of about 12 students, are the important way of learning, and most learning is collaborative. At the same time, we see a lot of diversity in these little groups. And we see that some students need more scaffolding than older students. And so what we need to do is kind of have collaborative learning together with personalized learning. And that personalized learning should really uh, support the collaborative learning. And I, I do see that learning analytics is the way to really uh, uh, steer and to uh, format the, the, the personalized learning with, within the context of this collaborative learning. So we need the learning analytics, the data, in order to help students to find out, okay, this is the, the type of activity I need to do beyond that collaborative learning. And that's the way we, I hope, uh, we can use it in Maastricht. And I do think that it's also the way we can use it outside Maastricht.